Okay, hi, welcome back. This is uh, part two of this um, Takam Mark IV captured German tank build uh, from World War I. Um, please like and please subscribe or dislike and tell me why you're disliking. Uh, we've done section one, as you saw in part one of this, um, of this probably very long stream of videos. Um, what I'm doing here is building this tank in a month um, to finish it, completely finished, by November the 11th in remembrance of uh, all those lost souls from the Great War. So um, yeah, look, I think we'll look here, up here at part two and part three, and this is the main hull assembly, and then going on to the, um, this towing eye at the front of the, uh, of the tank. And then part four is the exhaust. We may look at that, let's, let's just see, I'm not sure. Let's have a look in a minute. So, um, so yeah, I'll get the parts off the sprues and get them cleaned up and then we'll look at gluing all this lot together. Well, Ratty guys, here's another quick tip for you. When you get situations like this, where you've removed parts from the sprue and there's nothing left, um, what I always do is come along with these old cutters and just cut off that sprue, get rid of it. Um, it's easier to keep in the box. Right, so I've got all the parts off the sprues and uh, cleaned up all the, um, the nibs and everything. Um, so now let's get the build done. So I need to basically glue the roof, the rear wall, the floor, front glasses panel, another front glasses panel, and this front arbor that we did in stage one. So um, let's start looking at that. So I'll start by, I think, um, <laughs> yeah, how do you, where do you start? It's a really good point actually, because when you actually start to glue this together, it's all just going to want to collapse. So what I might need to do is get one of the side panels off and see if I can... Let's have a look. These side panels should have locations in them. Yes, they have. So I think what I'm going to do is get one of the side panels off and use that as a, um, as a jig to assemble the main thing. Right, we've got the um, one of the side panels off now. And as you can see here, the, this is the floor section locates in like that and then the rear section over here that locates in like that and what they've done here with the engineering um, they've made it so you can't really go wrong with this because you've got a, a raised lump in the middle there and a cut out there so you can't put it upside down and also here they've got a gap in there and a peg in there that fits in between so um yeah, doing this actually building it on the side makes life a lot easier. So what we're going to do is start by just gluing the the back wall to the um, to the floor. Again, be careful you don't put your finger here when you glue in because the glue will run down this joint and it will capillary under your finger and make a mess. So there we go. Now I haven't put enough glue on that it will go all the way down, but if it does or you just put it away before the glue dries and it'll be okay. So yeah, that's still free to come off of there. So that's those two pieces, so they're nice and square. Then this floor piece here obviously goes this way because it's got the cutout there to go over the tab that's there. Sorry, you guys are directly above, so you can't really see what I'm talking about, but I'm sure you get the idea. And if you're building this kit, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because you've probably got it in front of you while I'm doing it. And uh, if you have got this kit, why don't you build along? Um, I'll be spending a, a couple of hours a night on it and trying to film it as live as I can. This is still um, the 11th of October, it's the Thursday. And it's now, what's the time now? It's just gone 9 o'clock, it's 21.01. So... Of course, in between the, the chores of life that we do and everything. Um, so we're getting on with it, really. Uh, so this piece goes on so that that's like that. So this piece goes on with that at the bottom, cut out the bottom. So that's going to slot in there. Like so. I must say, the fit on these parts seems a lot better than it did on that those parts in section one. I wasn't at all impressed with the fit on them. It wasn't very good at all. So let's push that up into there. I'm going to have to put a bit of glue at the bottom and hope it doesn't 
capillary down onto the outside. There we go, there's that one there. This is basically just tacking it together and then I'll let it go off and uh, I'll take it off and it'll probably fall apart in my hands. So um, this is the front panel we made in section one. So this goes on like, like so. So I'll slot that in there. Again, the fit of all this is all down to um, how well you clean off the sprue nibs and how square you get everything. If you leave sprue nibs on those angled faces where they join together, you've got no chance. It just will not go together. You're better off taking too much off than, uh, than not enough. Because at the end of the day, it's a piece of armour. It's a piece of World War One armour, which is basically a load of steel plates riveted together. And um, there's probably gaps all over the place anyway on the real thing, so... And if there's not, if you if you've if one of your joints like this joint at the back here happens to be a piece of angle, then we'll use Mr. Surfacer to get rid of it, and I'm going to show you later what I do. So hopefully there will be some there. So when I say there will be some there, I mean the um, the angle plates that require the use of some Mr. Surfacer. This one's going to be tricky because these little two legs, these two legs on this one here and here. Obviously, if I glue that one, the glue is going to get onto the uh, onto the side piece, which I really don't want to happen. So I'll glue, I'll glue this one. On. Looks like a pretty poor fit. There. I'm not sure it's going to be okay. It's a it's a step joint. Chance putting some on here. If I just hold it away while the glue goes off. There we go. It's trying to pull back. It's a bit of extra thin. While it's wet, it will stick, but as soon as it turns into a a kind of paste, almost like the um, tube cements are. It won't actually bond that well. So, um, yeah, it doesn't want to go together very easily there. I think what I might do is, um, because I think I'll use some, some of the old cheap as the tape rather than waste time of your tape on this. You get this tape from Asda. You've if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen me talk about this before. It's um, it's uh, it's not very sticky at all. It's great for doing stuff like this. It's great for the modeler because it doesn't stick very well and it doesn't pull paint off and everything. See, it just doesn't stick at all. It's garbage. Um, it's a, like a pound a roll. Um, it's, you guys in America, if you're watching this, Asda is Walmart. Um, we get as the Walmart over here. Unfortunately, we don't get all the lovely sweets and stuff you get in, or the candy, should I say, you get in America. All we get is some um, boring grocery stores with no real American stuff at all, which I wish we did get. One thing I did wish we get is ice cream sandwiches and root beer, please. Um, two things that are very hard to come by in this country because most of the English people. I think root beer is disgusting. Well, having grown up in the States, I think it tastes wonderful. Anyway, I'm waffling. So there we go, that's that um, That's that built up. Um, if you're building this kit, take the tip from me, do it that way, and then you can't really go wrong. Um, yeah, you can see the fit isn't that fantastic down in there. I've got a bit of a step, but um, there's not much glue on it, I can sort it all out afterwards. There we go. So um, that's that for part two. I'll come back in a minute, we'll look at part three. Oh no, sorry, that's not that for part two. We've got to put this on. So that goes in there. I 
see that's going to go under there like that, is it? Oh, here we go. This is some um, Mr. I don't want to fit. Maybe you're supposed to put this onto the top first. Here is to have gone on now. How am I doing guys? Am I doing a good job of keeping the keeping the thing on camera? I'll tell you what, I don't know if you guys make videos yourself. But um doing this on camera is not easy. If I glue it to the front panel here, I'll put tape on there and the glue will run all down. So what I'll do is wait for this to go off so it's glued firmly to the to the roof section and then I can clamp that in place there and glue it rather than put tape on there and risk the, the glue capillary underneath the tape. So um, yeah that's gone down lovely. I just want to make sure it's nice and solid on there. See, the joint there really doesn't want to stick. I seem to remember now thinking about it. Somebody, I remember reading on one of the forums somewhere, somebody was complaining. These old Tacom kits don't... Um, they don't tend to want to stick. The, the plastic's funny. I remember when the original Kraz came out. I remember reading on a forum somewhere. Somebody said they didn't want glue, so maybe I've got the same problem with this one. If that's the case, I'll have to use that um, plastic weld because that'll glue bloody anything. So there we go, guys. I'll let that go off now and. Um, and come back in a minute and we'll look at section three. We've gone to part three of the instructions and um, we're putting on this front uh, shackle mount and the um, the eye bolt going through there which will um, give the ability I guess to be towed out of any any problems. So uh, I've cut the parts off, I've cleaned them up, there's some um, very nice moulding, this was slide moulded this piece to uh, get the holes through which is all very nice. So still got the, the main centre section of the hull attached. So I'm just going to dry fit this to check it fits. Yeah, I just want to check the block actually fits into that hole. Yeah, it does. So a little dab of glue in there. And then put this on. Beauty of armour is some um, unlike aircraft, you don't have to be really neat and tidy with your thing. I always try to be as tidy as I can whatever I'm making. But um you know the beauty of armour is if you do actually cock up, it's uh you've got an excuse, you've got mud, rust, dirt, you know, all sorts you can um cover it up with. So let's just put that pin in like that. We'll slot this little eye bolt into or this little shackle into place and then push the eye bolt through and there we have it yes yeah, so if you're building this kit my advice to you is 
take your time. The fit of some of these parts is um, it's definitely not a Tamiya kit. Um, it's far from it. So what I'm going to try and do here is be a bit clever and just glue the, um, the eye bolt in place because I want the shackle to swivel so it doesn't get knocked off. I'm just going to brush some glue around there to make sure this doesn't all break away. And there we go. There we have it. There's that that's section three. That's the little front shackle there. Oops, this has come out of its... Mind you, the glue's, the glue's going off now, so uh, it'll be okay. So, yeah, there we go. I'm going to leave that to um, set. And... Uh, and we'll go from there, but um, yeah, that's section three done now. You can see that on there. So uh, yeah, lovely. The next section is section four, the exhaust. Um, I think I might get those cleaned up, and I can do show you some more of that seam on the round part seam removal. So I think we'll um, do section four. Right, I've got all the parts um, cut out for section four, which is the exhaust. I notice there's also an A and B part. You've got this frame here which is these um which is made up of these triangular parts here um well i'm not sure this is such a good idea they just shove this here and you're expected to glue them together and know how they go so looking through the instructions i can see that here in step step six they show you putting this piece on here so that's actually this hole in the top of the um in the top of the hole so I guess the thing to do is glue them together and then place them in there to go off so that you know you've got them uh, the correct shape but it's just, they should have just had it going together here it's, um, it's a bit ludicrous really but uh, I think that's what happens when people that aren't modelers design these instructions and um, you know we see it all too often these days don't we the, the CAD model and everything so um, yeah, I need to glue those bits together first. So what I'm going to do actually is just glue them together and then place them onto the onto the hole. So I just put some glue down there. Uh, that's the wrong one. It's this one. That one's going to go on like that, I assume, and meet properly in the corner. Again, not an amazing fit. Um, it's going to have some flex in it even when it's completely cured but you get the idea I'm guessing there's going to be a panel that goes over the top of that so why they wouldn't put that panel on at this stage I don't know yep there is there's a panel here look there's a panel there that goes over the top of it so crazy um I can't put that on there because it goes into some hinges that fall into a part of the slots in here so I just want to pull that apart a bit so there we go this kit is all about using the kit as a jig so right these silencer halves we've all glued parts together before like this haven't we so I'm gonna get some pegs at the ready You can see they're not very straight so I think I need to do and I can't sand them because they've got raised 
of the summer, but it is only exhaust, so it, it's going to be all rusted up anyway. So, um, put some glue in there. Let the capillary action do the work. Pull that through. And that's, that's that end glued. And I'm going to put some glue on these joints here, and that should capillary down through. Like I said, this is an exhaust, so you know it's not like we're gluing together two halves of an airliner's fuselage. And then I'll probably show you how I do all the denting and stuff. I'll probably dent this up and beat it up because it would have just been um, sheet metal. And uh, if people climbing over the tank and blowing into it and dropping stuff on it, it would be all dented. So there we go. And particularly if the Germans did do all those lovely paint jobs, then they would have been climbing all over when they painted it. So, there we have it. So that's that glued together, sticks and clothes paints on there. Let that go off overnight. Now the exhaust, um, what I basically want to do is show you here about the moving seams. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but there is a, a roll seam down the middle of there. And we get this with roll cages, exhausts, all sorts of tubular, you know, any sort of tubular part. And some people go in, what I'll do is on the bottom, I'll show you this, because it doesn't matter, it's not going to be seen. They go over their knife and they start scraping away and they end up with a flat spot and then they end up trying to sand it and you end up with an oval. Um, one of my little tips is to use, not well prepared, I should have got it out here, it is here. Come here. Let's see if I can. Right, broken saw blades. You get these, I've gone through this before, you get these JLC saws and they've got three holes in the middle. When they break, sometimes they break through the holes. And you can see on this one there's a bit of a hole left there, so you end up with a radius. And what you can do is just using that radius, is scrape along the seam. You can buy dedicated tools for this, but they cost, cost money. And these cost money, and then once they're used and you no longer need them, then they can still serve a purpose in life. So we can just scrape over those seams like that. Remember again, this is an exhaust. It's not a, a roll cage in a rally car or something. You just scrape over there like that. And you can see the seam is all but gone. And we'll pick up that. Then one of the sticks I forgot to show you. Well, first of all, with the green, with the floury green stick, I'm going to just lightly go over this, and you can see what I'm doing. A 45 degree angle to the part not pushing down at all, no pressure whatsoever. And I'm just removing these sprue nibs. Now here I can't go at 45 degrees or I'll sand away that, that ring there. So what I've got to do is just gently, no pressure at all, and just keep moving, moving around. The correct way to sound, when I did my Rolls Royce apprenticeship, they taught me the correct way to fire the radius is like this. This was discussed in one of the forums a while ago. And that is, it's not like that. You don't go this way, you go like that. And that's what they train you at Rolls-Royce in your apprenticeship, well, when you did apprenticeship years ago, and that's how they train you to fire a radius. And there's that bit there I'm gonna file off because that's not supposed to be there, that sprue attachment point. And what I have to do is check all this out before it's painted because um, there's a lot of mold seams and I don't, I'm not sure these bits here, if they're supposed to be there or not, or if they're actually um, sprue connection points. This stick here, this is a bloody work of art for the flooring models. This, they, they call it the blue sponge, it's a skinny sponge, but it's very, very soft and it's got pretty sharp edges on it and it's, it's sort of not too fine and not too coarse, but it's wonderful for doing stuff like this because without using any pressure, I'm able to get right into the corners, right up to the ends, look. Go in between these brackets, I know that I'm getting right in there. And then turn it over and do the same again. Over the top of the bracket. 
and I hope you can see here what's happening. You can see as I slide across, let's do it this way. As I slide across, you can see that the, the sanding stick is taking the shape of the, of the exhaust. Whereas if you use one like this, you can see it doesn't take the shape at all. And it just leaves you with a flat. So, um, just get into the corner like that. There we have it. start rubbing the seam it turns white so when it when the white is gone when the white line is gone you know the seam is gone and might need a bit more work but hopefully you can pick that up in the light that seam is gone and what I'll do now as I did before a bit of extra thin just over the top of it like this on those joints because that'll make sure you get right into the corners and there you go no seams lovely sharp corners all ready for uh, a bit of rust effects one more quick thing before I go on the end of the exhaust they mold it it's quite thick open it out you can use a drill um, but I like to use a knife to do this because if you use a drill you end up thinning out quite deep because the drill's not um, not tapered. So you just use a knife to scrape away to thin out that section. I've got a bit too thin there, it's a bit too um, I'll show you how to get around it now. I'll push that back together. Like so. And then I can get my tally extra thin in there. gone a bit too thin that's because I generally work through a, um, a magnifying glass and because I'm on camera for you guys I can't so yeah it's your fault um, what I'll do is I'll just put some Mr. Servicer on in there or I'll just jag the whole end up like it's really rusty uh, like it's a very old tank that's seen a lot of use so yeah that's that's a any exhaust pipes you do in cars military vehicles trucks whatever there's um that's the way to um get the ends thin, get rid of the seam lines and end up with a very realistic looking exhaust pipe or roll cage tubing or whatever rather than um, rather than having that bloody seam line or ended up rubbing it away and getting flats on it. So there we go, I'm going to call that a wrap for, um, well I think this is part two. So uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow and we'll look at part five which is gluing some brecca tree onto the top of the hull and then we're going to be fitting the exhaust but we're not going to be painting like they say um we're going to fit it first so yeah guys thanks for watching um see you all the next part which i think will be part three and please like please subscribe you're going to see this kit built all the way right through to the very end see it painted weathered everything and um yeah, and there'll be a lot more stuff on the channel as well. I seem to have a bit of a crazy moment for World War One stuff. All that B-52 and, and everything is, um, oh, it's all just so big and wrong. And, you know, as much as I enjoy cutting kits about and everything, um, cutting them about and then discover what you've done is probably not right at all. But anyway, uh, enough of that. So, uh, yeah, um, let's just enjoy this month. Let's get this... Uh, this build done maybe another couple of war one builds as well who knows and then we'll go from there thanks for watching uh, see you in part three bye bye